Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give all of you the basics to using and editing sound and music inside of your DaVinci Resolve 17 videos. So first off, for importing sounds and music into your project, just like with the video file, you can pull various formats into your media pool. So for instance, .wav files are really common for sounds, and .mp3 would be really common for music. So a lot of these you can actually get for free online if you need them. So some of these sound effects are from Mixkit, and then this music file is by Kevin McLeod. Just keep in mind that if you use it in your video, if there's any kind of Creative Commons attribution where you have to give the author credit before you use it in your video. So for these files, you can just kind of select them and drag and drop them into your media pool like you would before. And when you have the audio in your project and thumbnail view, just like with the videos, you can kind of scrub through it to get a preview of the audio. So here, you can preview the sound effect as quick or slow as you want, depending on how fast you scrub. Now, if you plan on keeping a larger library of sound effects, what might be a good idea is over on the media tab, you could add the storage location where you keep all those sounds so that you can easily drag and drop them into your media pool from the media storage. So for instance, I can right click here, add a new location, and then I'm going to navigate to this sound folder on my computer, hit open. And now this folder is over here where I can just drag any of these sound effects into a project even easier because I don't need to use the Windows or Mac file explorer to do so. I can just drag it into your project. So for actually using the sound and music on your videos, a really good idea is going to be to separate your different categories of audio into different audio tracks. So what I would generally do if your video has recorded audio along with it is just leave those as the default audio track one. So imagine that this audio track one is voice narration. I'm not going to actually record that, but we have this track dedicated to that. So the reason you would separate your audio tracks is so that if you need to make changes across all of your voice narration or all of your sound effects or all of your music tracks at once, you can do that easily on the Fairlight tab. Now you can also edit specific audio files or clips individually, but being able to edit them on a track by track basis is really helpful. So if I want my music into audio track two, I can simply select and drag this music track into audio track two and position it where you would want it, just like you would with an audio clip and then hit space to test that, of course. So now I can click over here and rename this audio to track to be music, just make it a little bit more clear. And we can keep going, we can add a audio track three. So to go along with this forest stock clip, I also have some forest audio track for ambient sounds. So let's drag this into audio track three now. And if you can't quite see the audio waveforms because they're kind of quiet, you can always stretch the audio track to be a little bit bigger. If it's still too quiet, the problem might be that you need to actually increase the volume on the audio track. Uh, right before we do that, let's just rename this to be sound effects. And now we can click on this audio track. So I'll go to the start here, I'll hit play, and then we'll see if the music is just way too loud compared to the background audio. So we can definitely hear the birds chirping in the background, but the music is a little loud. So to raise and lower the volume of your music or your sound effects, you can click on each clip individually. And then you go up here to the inspector where you have volume here. And let's drop the volume of the music by a few decibels. You can also manually type if you want to get a specific number like negative four or negative five. As you can see, the audio waveforms are going to shrink vertically to reflect that change in the audio volume. So it's actually quite easy to just look at your audio tracks and see which ones should generally be louder and which ones are quieter. So likewise, if I click on the bird audio track on audio track three, and now I go up here, I can raise the volume. Let's just add three, maybe five decibels to it. And then we can see that these spikes are now quite a bit bigger. So now the volume should probably match better between the music and the bird chirping in the background. So let's go to the start here and hit play. So I would say that that match is quite a bit better now. So you might run into the situation when you're editing your video that you want to fade your audio clips in and out as well. So a music track like this generally is going to kind of have a fade in at the start. But what if you went halfway through your video and you needed to make a cut here and you wanted to switch music tracks? So then it would end quite abruptly and it would sound a lot better if you actually faded out the music rather than just cutting between this music track and another one. 
So I'll go to blade edit mode. I'll just make a cut here for this music track. I'm going to cut it away. And then I'm going to just add the same music right over here to start again. But if we play it as it is now, it's going to end very abruptly. So let's hit play and see how that is. So now a couple ways of fading from one audio clip to the other. One is that you can right click on the border between two clips and you can add a crossfade of various durations. So when we right click on the border here, we can see that we have the options of choosing a 6, a 14, a 30 frame or a 60 frame crossfade. The more frames, the longer the duration is going to be. Uh, this, of course, depends on your video frame rate. So if you're editing your video in 30 frames per second, a 30 frame crossfade is going to be one second, of course. So if we want a long duration fade here, we can choose. We can add a, a 60 frame crossfade. Now, if you see red on one or both sides of your audio clips, they may need to trim the audio clips in order to make room for this transition. So I'll go ahead and do a trim clips here. And now we can go back here, hit space, and see how this crossfade sounds. So it didn't work that great. And I think part of the reason there is because with a crossfade, the audio doesn't completely fade out before the other one starts fading in. So I'll hit Command Z or Control Z if you're on Windows to undo that. And in this case, another option that might work better if you wanted to just fade all the way out is to grab these little white notches and pull them out to the duration that you want it to take for one audio clip to completely fade out. So if we want it to take a full second for its fade out, we would just pull this over here till it says one second. Now you can see it goes from negative 29 frames to one second because the timeline is 30 frames per second, of course. And we can do the same thing on this side for fading in. We grab the little white notch and we pull it out about one second there. So what this is gonna do is fade the audio volume from 100% to 0% at this border and then 0% to 100% once we switch to the second music track. So this probably will work better than the crossfade. Let's give it a shot. So as you can hear, that goes much, much smoother. So I mentioned earlier that you can make edits on a audio track by audio track basis rather than selecting each music track or each sound effect specifically to raise or lower the volume. As you can see, the first time we brought in this audio clip, we changed the volume to negative five decibels compared to its original audio volume. But then this new version of the same music track, it's still set to volume zero. So I could manually set this to negative five, but if we have four or five music tracks and we need to make different edits, it can be volume, but other things as well, it can get a little tedious. So instead, what we could do is select the first music track and reset this back to volume of zero. And now if we go to the Fairlight tab, that is the audio editing tab, second from the right at the bottom, then we'll have this audio mixer. And for the audio mixer, Here's where we make changes that are going to affect an entire audio track. So audio track two is our music. If we want to lower the volume by five decibels for all of the music tracks, then we just go down here to the volume slider and we change this to be about negative five decibels. So now if we go here and hit play, we should see that both the left version of the Scheming Weasel and the right version have had their audio lowered down. Really, it hasn't edited the audio clips directly. It's just that before it goes to the final output, the audio mixer is going to make those changes. So let's go ahead and hit play. So you can still hear that the birds in the background still have their audio loud enough to hear compared to the music. But if we add this up at zero, then the music should be quite a bit louder. Okay, so let's set that back to negative five. So just to be aware of them, there are also audio effects that you can apply to your audio clips. So you can do this on a track by track basis, or you can actually just drag them onto individual audio clips. But if you have, let's say a voiceover narration track, let's say that's audio track one, you can go to effects here. And then you could add in a dialogue processor, which includes a bunch of effects, which may make your spoken audio sound a little bit better, a little bit crisper. And I'll, since I added that, I'm just going to click over here and, and then I'm going to delete that plugin. Uh, you could also have noise reduction, which is currently down here in 
restoration noise reduction if you have some background noise in your recorded audio. I have other videos that cover those kind of effects in DaVinci Resolve, so if you're interested in that, just check my channel for those videos. One more thing I'll add for this video, since we're talking about sound effects and music, you may notice at the top in uh, both the edit page and the Fairlight page, you have the sound library area. So there's actually a free DaVinci Resolve sound library you can go ahead and download and use in your videos. Once you have it installed, you'll be able to search by uh, fields name and description to find the different audio effects. And if you're on the edit page, you would just open up sound library right there. So this can be a quick way to get other uh, kind of more built in effects that you can use in your videos. So I'll go ahead and download and install it, and I'll just show you quickly how that can look like. So I opened up the package after extracting the zip. Let's go ahead and install that sound library. So now that that's installed, the next time we boot up Resolve, this should look different. So here we go with the sound pack installed. Now we have this preview window where we can see the sound effects and play them. Let's go ahead and search for one. So I remember there being some ant sound effects. So I'm just going to type in ant here, and then we have the various results which turn up, their duration, a rating if we prefer to give it one, and we can of course click on it and hit play to test the audio. So just like before, if we want to add it to a audio check, we can do that either on the Fairlight tab or we can go back to the edit page. So let's click on sound library on edit, type in ant again, and I'll just take this sound effect and put it right into there. We may or may not need to increase the volume depending on how it sounds after we hit play. So let's just go ahead and test it. I'd say that's pretty quiet. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to bump it up 10 decibels just by selecting it, going to the inspector and setting it to 10. So now let's hit play. So that basically in a nutshell is also how you use the sound library. If you want to add other uh, folders on your computer that you want to be able to search in the same way, you can click here and then choose local database, and then you can add a library. So let's add the sound folder I have. So I'm just going to navigate to the same sound folder I have on my computer, go ahead and hit open. And now we just add the sound effects into a searchable library. So I don't need to use the file explorer or finder on Mac. All I need to do is go in here, have a local database selected, and then we can search by the sound effect names. So let's try to find that same birds and insect flying sounds. So just go up here and type in bird. And then as you can see, it shows up in the same way. So yeah, so of course you can use this way of looking for sounds in your computer. Generally, me personally, I would probably stick to the media storage and then just drag them into the project as I need them. But of course, that's just me. So as far as the basics of sound effects and music inside of DaVinci Resolve, that is about all you really need to know. So I've been Chris. I hope this video has helped all of you out. Thanks for watching till the end. And I will see all of you in my future DaVinci Resolve video content.